Good morning, everyone. Ben here, your friendly neighborhood med student. And today is a really, really exciting day. I'm going to go to brunch with a bunch of queer South Asians. They're amazing. I've known them for the last couple of years. I'm going to go get brunch with them. And apparently the brunch spot is next to the historic Oakland Cemetery, which is the oldest cemetery in the city of Atlanta. I've never been. I heard it's beautiful. So after brunch, I'm hoping I'm hoping to go check out that cemetery before this meeting that I have, and then I'm gonna spend uh, the day with my family, my bio fam, because uh, it's been a minute, and my parents are going over to the motherland for the next three weeks afterwards. So this will be my last time seeing my parents before uh, they come back at the end of December. So uh, brunch. They're calling it brunch, but it's gonna be at like 9.15. I think that's like breakfast time. Um, but you know, I'll, I'll let them have, I'll let them call it whatever they wanna call it. And, um, but I'm gonna get super cute and I'm excited to go to brunch. So I'm gonna go with a turtleneck look today. I think that'll be super, super cute. Um, the thing about having dark clothing and a, a cat is that they have so so much fur and you know i've tried to use a more economical type of lint roller because um <sighs> i didn't want to waste so much sticky tape and paper but they don't like the, the mechanical lint, lint rollers don't aren't as good as the tape one i get the pet duty sticky tape this one it has like the green lid it's so good it gets rid of all the lint and it just makes me look super clean when I go out and nobody know knows that I have a very sheddy fur monster that I live with okay so I think this is a good look uh, for fall breakfast brunch or whatever you call it I still think it's a breakfast but I'm gonna pair it off with Dolce and Gabbana is the one that's gonna be my perfume today. Uh, it's the Ade Parfum Edition. I really like it. I really enjoy it. I still haven't used it enough, I think. So I think this will be a great scent for brunch. Uh, gloomy weather day brunch. And then I'm going to pair it off with these brown shoes that matches the belt. And I think, I think overall, I think it's a good look. Okay, it's been about three hours and I just got out of brunch and then we went and walked around Oakland Cemetery. Brunch was amazing, Rhea's Bluebird. I went to Rhea's Bluebird in- Hey y'all, so I decided that I had to add a voiceover for this part of the clip because I accidentally moved the cable on my uh, microphone while I was filming and it started creating a lot of static noise. So it was almost like really hard for me to listen to what was happening but uh what i ended up doing after having the best buttermilk pancakes at ria's bluebird bluebird i highly recommend you check them out in atlanta my friends and i went over to oakland cemetery to find the margaret mitchell tombstone apparently margaret mitchell the author of gone with the wind was buried at oakland C cemetery and I thought I had found it in the beginning when you look at these clips, but like that wasn't actually where she lived. Apparently there's a lot of Mitchells <laughs> um, that died over the years. I'm not surprised because it's a very common name. Um, so then we went around and I looked at the cemetery. It was actually a pretty beautiful um, cemetery with a lot of cool looking mausoleums. And then finally, um, we found these signs that led to the Margaret Mitchell grave. So I followed it around and then I found it. But then while I was looking at it, I was like, wait, I don't see Margaret Mitchell anywhere. I was looking at it on this clip. But then my friend went around the tombstone and was like, oh, wait, she's here. So she was on the opposite. <laughs> so I ended up taking a picture of that. And here it is. Um, and then afterwards, I went home and I did my interview uh, for the anthropology student. All right, I just finished my interview um, and it was pretty, pretty long. Like it was about an hour and 15 minutes, but it was super, super awesome. I got to talk a lot about uh, navigating dysphoria as a medical student and some of the things I see in doctors that could be improved for the treatment for trans patients. So I really love talking um, to my interviewer and um, can't be, I wanna protect their identity, but they're a PhD student and they're doing a study on how gen, uh, dysphoria affects people, trans people in different professions. So I'm really glad I was able to uh, express 
my experience as a trans person in medicine, especially as a trans person of color in medicine. Yeah, so now I'm just gonna go to my family's place and hang out with them, but before that, I got some skincare stuff uh, <laughs> on my Amazon locker, so I'm gonna pick that out before I head over to my family's, and then it should take about a couple of hours to spend time with my family, because this is the last time I'll see my mom before she goes off to uh, Bangladesh, really. Uh, they're gonna go for three weeks, I think, and then, yeah, it'll be fun. Oh my gosh, y'all, it's like 7.30 p.m. I finally got back from my mom's place. It was really fun. Uh, we may have gotten to the park and I may have done some childish things like play on a swing set, but it was super fun and then we got some really good food. I'm really happy to see my family, especially my mom, because she's going to be going away to the motherland, Bangladesh, for the next three weeks until the end of December. Actually, they're coming like literally the day before Christmas. So it, it's going to be a while before I see my mom, but I am happy for her because she hasn't seen her parents in over 20 years ever since we immigrated. But... In addition to that, I did go to the gym and I did pick up my packages for uh, my little Black Friday deals on skincare, skincare stuff. So I'm going to go grab them. Because look at this box. It's completely busted up. Like this was an Amazon package that was delivered to the locker. But the other box package um, was fine. So let's open these up. Let's open up the busted up one. I hope nothing got, nothing got messed up. <laughs> During the delivery process. Ah. Oh, actually, this is a birthday gift. Okay, yeah, uh, this is gonna be uploaded after your birthday, but I got one of my friends, um, Afnan Supremacy Incense. It's a really awesome, super, super, super strong fragrance. It smells also super good. Um, I have a bottle myself, that's why I like it so much. But I got it for my friend for her birthday because she also likes really nice scents. This, this must be the uh, skincare stuff for me. Ah, oh, yes, it's in here. All right, so I got the Innisfree. Uh, it's like a Korean brand pore cleansing facial foam with vo uh, Jeju Volcanic Clusters. I tried this out because my, my girlfriend is a huge Korean beauty skincare fan i tried it out at her place and i really really liked it it really made my face clear up as someone with a traditionally oily face so i'm really happy i got that so i got that uh, i got some interdental brushes i noticed that uh, i floss but i also use interdental brushes in my problem areas and i really really uh feel like it's helping oh my god my cat is destroying my apartment Okay, but what's new? Yeah, but these interdental dental brushes do a really good job of getting the problem areas in my teeth and making sure plaque doesn't build up there because last time I got kind of dinged uh, by my <laughs> by my dental hygienist. So I got these. They were pretty cheap. They were like maybe like six bucks for a pack of 32, which will last me like a month. And then the last skin care product I got is the La Roche Pousay Broad Spectrum 50 SPS mineral strength gentle lotion for your face. It's a sunscreen lotion. Uh, I noticed I was using the Cetaphil. Actually, let me just go get that real quickly. So I was using this Cetaphil Derma Control um, SPF 30 facial sunscreen uh, for oily sensitive skin. It's oil absorbing and it, was, it did a super, super good job. And I'm still going to be using it on everything below my face because what I noticed is that when I applied it on the top of my forehead over the uh, over the day you know the, the lotion kind of goes down it like melts and goes down and it was really burning my eyes and it turns out it's because um it's because it's this uses a chemical based SPF while this La Roche Poussin one which is almost a third more expensive uses mineral based SPF so it's less likely to cause that burning that's caused by these chemical-based SPFs. So I'm going to only apply this to my forehead to save some money. <laughs> but uh, let's give it a shot because I'm not 100% still sold on the fact that it's going to stop me from my eyes burning. But uh, I'm going to give it a couple of days, see if it works. And if it does work, I'll probably make um, a, you, uh, Instagram reels about how uh, mineral-based sunscreens uh, are better for people who have sensitivity to... Um, chemical-based sunscreens on their eyes, especially because 
my forehead is where most of my wrinkles come from. So I want to make sure that uh, I stay youthful as much as I can. Even though I already look like a 16-year-old most of the time, especially when I shave my beard, I want to look youthful as long as possible and not crusty. So I thought I could end this vlog by uh, sharing a story with y'all. Uh, about the first time I ever cried with a fake patient actress. If you don't know about how medical school works, um, medical school is usually around four years, and the first two years is our, what we call our preclinical years, before we actually see patients at the hospital and the clinics and everything. But we still need to um, not only just study about the art of medicine in the first two years, but we should get some experience in learning how to do patient interviews. And the way we do that, instead of, you know, just delving us straight into patients that we might not know the best way to take care of them is that uh, usually medical schools will hire patient actors and these are like actual actors some people are just members of the community who are good in acting but many of them because they get paid so well um, these are actors who you know start in tv start in tv shows maybe some local ads um, who are hired to be actors for us to be patients and usually they do a pretty good job. I'm not gonna lie, like their acting abilities are fantastic, but some of them take their jobs very, very seriously. It's almost like full on method acting. And I remember one of the first patients that I've ever had to do this patient acting experience with is called the Standardized Patient Experience or OSCE. Um, I don't know what OSCE stands for. I'll probably put it somewhere down here, um, but um, during one of these OSCEs, I actually broke down because one of the patients is like acting was so freaking good. So in this specific scenario, I had to break the bad news of having terminal cancer to a patient. And you know, I consider myself a really touchy feely guy. Y'all already know this if you watch my other videos. I'm like super into, you know, people's lived experiences. I'm like super emotional and I get super involved in patients lives. And I don't want to do the best for them. So already it was a pretty hard topic for me because I hate breaking bad news, but I know I want to do it in the most sensitive way. But the fact that the scenario was that I had to break the news that this person has terminal cancer and there was no cure. That was a little hard for me uh, to start off with. Um, so I went into the patient room and, you know, I was like, knock, knock, how's it going? I hope you're doing well. Well, we have some like, you know, we had the findings of your results and I really want to share it with you, but um, I'm afraid that the news isn't isn't what you really want to hear, but do you really want to hear it? So that's how I started off, you know, my uh, patient interview. And you know, the actors usually, you know, they take it seriously, but sometimes they're not too into it. But this actor, she was, <laughs> she was so good. She was like, what do you mean? Is there something wrong with me? And then I told her she had terminal cancer. And then I started getting really into it. I started getting into the acting where I started to believe that it was real. Maybe I was about the acting too. Um, Paramount Pictures, if you if you want to hire a trans med student, a brown trans med student for one of your future films, just you can just hit me up. But um, she started crying hysterically. She started saying, what is she going to do with her life, her husband, her kids? And, you know, that started making me think about my life and my future. What if I get cancer? <laughs> what if I have this patient? What, I really what if I saw this patient for years? And, like, I started to know about her family. So I started thinking all of these things in my head. And before I knew it, I was crying with her. <laughs> I was literally in the room crying with her. Like I was wearing a mask obviously because it was COVID. It is COVID. And like my eyes are running down and she could see that I was crying too. And you know, but I still tried to hold my composure enough to like console her and to tell her that I'm with her throughout this entire thing, even though like um, it might not be the best outcome that uh, she's going to have people on her side. And you know, even when I was saying that, I was tearing up. And at the end of it, like, um, when we when she finally broke character, I was surprised. Because <laughs> she was so, so good at it. Um, she was like, you did a really, really good job. And I really felt like you cared about me. And I was like, yeah, because, like, your acting is so good. I actually thought I was in the situation for real. So I feel like even though my skills were good in that scenario because how good she was as an actor i acted more naturally for the situation anyways that um if that gives you an idea of what med students do as far as in training themselves to be able to talk to patients um it's kind of what 
we're trained to do. We want to be, you know, we want to be holistic. We want to be caring doctors. I think the push is that we create doctors with better bedside manner, and I want to be a good doctor with good bedside manner. And um, I still think about that experience to this day because even though I feel like I was a little over the top with how much I broke down in that scenario, and I, I was a kid, like a kid as far as medical training, it was maybe my first year, um, I still hold on to that humanity that I have when I treat patients because I want to treat my patients as they're my own, uh, whether or not they're an actor or they're a real patient. So. I hope this made you like, kind of understand what med students go through as far as our training, as far as our clinical training. We also have to do a lot of studying on the side and maybe in another vlog I can tell you about how how we retain information because I get that question a lot like how do y'all retain like 2,000 pages of information uh, in your heads? But that's for another day, another vlog maybe. But anyways, uh, the day is, the night is not young, <laughs> it is late. I'm going to rest up a little bit before I do some Uber Eats deliveries, make some extra side hustle money. Um, so I guess I'll see y'all in the next vlog. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and activism work. And I'll see y'all in the next vlog. Mwah. This is Ben.